So what I have here is a newspaper from the day after 9-11. And there's some information in here to show it's almost a smoking gun that 9-11 was orchestrated. Right here it talks about how a van filled with explosives was found. In another development, police last night arrested two people and intercepted a truck loaded with explosives on New York's George Washington Bridge, according to an unconfirmed local CBS television report. The truck contained enough explosives to blow up the entire span, a television reporter said. Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick confirmed that the Port Authority police stopped a van that might have had explosives, but added in remarks to NY1 television that it is unconfirmed. But... Notice how there's way more detail in this little section than other places, where it just says vague things like, Terrorism experts said the attack bore the hallmarks of bin Laden's meticulous coordinated planning, given the near simultaneous hijacking of four planes from three airports. Notice how like vague something like this is, where they immediately the next day frame it on bin Laden. Bin Laden is patient persistent. How is his picture already in the newspaper the day after, especially when the Taliban did not take credit for the attacks, as it says in this paper. Afghanistan's Taliban rulers condemned the attacks and rejected suggestions that suspected terrorist mastermind Osama bin Laden, who has been given asylum in Afghanistan, could be behind them. It doesn't make sense if they successfully orchestrated the most devastating terrorist attack on American soil that they don't take credit for it. And look at them ramping up hatred towards Arabs. Palestinians in Lebanon's refugee camp celebrated the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon yesterday. These men, waving Palestinian flags, were demonstrating at a refugee camp in Lebanon. Then it says here, the reaction in Israel was intense. Many Israelis said they felt as if the attacks had occurred in Israel itself and expressed hope that now Americans will better understand Israel's tough tactics towards Palestinians. It's like, oh, now you understand why it's necessary to go attack these countries in the Middle East who are Israel's enemies. The Middle East, they condemned these attacks. Syria's government condemned the attacks and offered condolences to the American people. What was really interesting is they went over all these people from Iran, Iran's president to Syria's. And then they go over to Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, and they make sure to add this little part in, whom the United States has accused of backing international terrorism called the attacks horrifying. But look, they add that in, and soon after, the United Nations attacks Libya, overthrows Gaddafi, takes him out. And years later, it doesn't even really make sense why, because the entire region is complete chaos now. It was a terrible move. It created a refugee crisis, a human slavery crisis, when at this point in time, Libya was one of the most stable areas in the entire region. But just notice how they like prime our minds to think who the enemy is. And then look how we have back here, Iranian President Mohammad Khatami, a moderate who is struggling for power against the country's hardline Islamic leaders, expressed deep regret. Really, this means this is an Iranian that is backed by the West, put in by the West, artificially, so the West can attempt to have control over this region. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the color revolution known as Operation Ajax that the CIA orchestrated in this area in Iran. This is all mainstream stuff you can look up on Google and Wikipedia, where our intelligence agencies purposely facilitated a coup in Iran. Then we have another weird thing here. So tell loved ones that you'll die. Apparently, there were people on Flight 77 with cell phones back in 2001, and they were able to call people on the ground, and the terrorists told them, tell your loved ones that you'll die. When cell phones don't work when you're in a plane, especially not back in 2001. She called from the plane while it was being hijacked. Theodore Olson said, I wish it wasn't so, but it is. I mean, I don't know this person, but that sort of sounds like Shakespearean. I don't know, it just doesn't seem like normal dialogue. So it says that she called once, then moments later, she called again after the flight was hijacked. And she asked, what should I tell the pilot? She was composed as composed as you can be under the circumstances, but her call was cut off. And it says, but just as this plane seemed to be on a suicide mission into the White House, the unidentified pilot executed a pivot so tight it reminded observers of a fighter jet. Again, this is a Boeing 757 commercial airline. The plane circled 270 degrees to the right to approach the Pentagon from the southwest, whereupon Flight 77 fell below radar level, vanishing from controller screens, the sources said. 
Aviation sources said the plane was flown with extraordinary skill, making it highly likely that a trained pilot was at the helm. We now know that this is not true. They were complete amateurs, according to the main narrative. So yeah, it just doesn't make much sense. I'll just show you guys some of the pictures. You can pause the video wherever you want if you want to read any of this stuff yourself. My dad kept this newspaper because he had the hindsight to know that this was going to be very important one day. So those, those are the main things I wanted to report on. If I find anything else, I'll make a follow-up video. Thank you.